This is it. This is it. We are now approaching landing. We are now live on Facebook. It's Adrian Capricorn Tigress of Astrology. A look inside. And we are launching into Saturday Night Live. Anyway, I've had too much fun. And just to give you guys time to prepare and get here and make your request, well, I'm going to listen to some music because you know that's what I always do. And tonight, we're actually going to be dancing to Amber, Amber, with This Is Tonight. Do you remember this song from back in the day? Oh my God, I used to love this song. I know y'all remember this song, right? Yeah, I love it. I'm going to dance to this tonight. <laughs> Okay, you guys, it's Saturday Night
Okay, you guys. Well, it is official. It is Saturday Night Live. You know, it, you know, I feel bad because I don't even know if I uploaded the last Saturday Night Lives. And if I didn't yet, I apologize. I, I kid you not. Last Saturday Night Lives seems like yesterday to me. I, 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 I sped through this week in such a propulsion that I missed everything. I don't, I don't even know what happened this week. So I've been in a daze of my own, and I won't go into that this week, but these kind of things occur, to sing. And uh, I, I've just kind of been in a daze, really, truly. So, okay, we're going to talk about where the planets are because there are some major aspects going on. I really want to discuss where the aspects are. We, we've gone into a major change. You know, we've gone from... Aquarius into Pisces now. So since the last time I talked to you, we're now in Pisces season. And um, there's there's just a whole different vibe. I don't know why. I feel like my camera is too low. Right? Is it? I mean, it's not. It's got... I, it's just a good height. Maybe if I stay back here. It's weird. Anyway, so we're now in Pisces season. <laughs> And uh, it is now in the Senate today is at three degrees of Pisces. Now, we are dealing with a Mercury retrograde. Uh, Mercury is now at nine degrees of Pisces. I think it was at 12 at its high. It's almost 13. And it's on its way back to 28 degrees of uh, Aquarius where it's going to go direct. But until then, we're in Mercury retrograde. And speaking of 28 degrees of Aquarius, the moon at this very moment, I kid you not, is at 28 degrees of Aquarius right now. That must mean something. So we do have the Mercury at nine degrees of Pisces right now. And um, I happen to know that happens to be like, it is exact, is that exactly on my Jupiter? I, hold up. I, it's either exactly on it at this very moment or it's about to go on it after this show. That means some of you people are going to make some, uh, hopefully, some purchases from this from this show tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pitch in early. <laughs> so anyone who is in need of assistance, okay, or, or you know, you're looking for an astrologer, a psychic, an intuitive, a card reader, anything like that. That's what I do. I've been at this for over, you know, thirty over 35 years, actually. Um, I've done over 10,000 readings. I helped a lot of people and I enjoy it. It's my joy is to help other people. Okay. I really want to put that out there because, um, you know, I don't know why some people do what they do, but from, for me, it is the pure love and joy of what I do. I've always loved astrology since I was a kid. So it's just part of my nature. I do have a curious first house, you know, it's, Aquarius is intercepted my first house. So I do think it's just part of my nature as an astrologer. Um, but yeah, you guys, if, if, you know, if you're looking right now and you're looking for someone that you can trust, especially as your astrologer, someone you can tell your secrets to, believe me, I'm someone you can do that with. I've got my, my Venus and my Neptune up in, in uh, Scorpio. I've got Scorpio in midheaven, got Pluto and in the eighth house. So, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you can trust me. Okay. So here's the thing. We've got these two planets, uh, well, we've got the Sun and Mercury in Pisces, but you know soon the Moon's going to go in Pis into Pisces, like tomorrow. Uh, and we are about to have a new Moon in Pisces, okay? So Pisces out there, you are about to have the reset of the year if you are born Pisces. Um, this could affect some Virgos. I've been telling my daughter, who's like a triple Virgo, like, well, she's got Gemini rising, but she's got her sun, moon, and Mercury in Virgo. And, you know, like, hey, wait, hold up. This is the opposite of Virgo season. This is Pisces season. So don't try to overdo it or anything like that if you're a Virgo, a Sag, or a Gemini, because it's Pisces time, okay? So we're going to have the sun in Pisces. We're going to have the moon in Pisces. We're going to have Mercury retrograding in Pisces. And this is all going down tomorrow. Now, 
simultaneously, Mars is at four degrees of Capricorn, and it's going to be sextile in the whole darn shaboom. Uh, the sun, the moon, and in its own way, even Mercury, because Mercury is going back toward eight degrees, right? So we're, we're dealing with that. Meanwhile, Mars in Capricorn is also trying uh, Uranus in uh, Taurus right now at three degrees. So that, that's positive. By the way, the sextiles, the trines, we are talking a very positive time. I would say harmonious is a good word. Relaxing could be a good word. I mean, I think after tonight, because, you know, the moon's still in Aquarius and for the next couple of hours, but once it gets into that formation of going into Pisces and then, you know, it, it sets off that new moon. Well, you know, for Pisces, this is the new start of your year. This is your new year. It starts tomorrow. So all the things you've been putting off or hoping to do or saying I'll start it next year, well, next year is tomorrow, okay? So, um, you know, get your biggest intentions going right now because what you intend or, you know, what you t intend to manifest is what you will manifest. Like what, what your biggest intentions are is what you're going to get. If you intend to, uh, you know, build a, a million dollar company this year, you, at least since that's your intention, you have an opportunity to perhaps get closer to it than if you don't set the intention. I hope this makes sense. If your intention is to get married, then set your intention now to do that. You might not do it, but you'll get closer to it than if you don't set the intention. If your intention is to get a house, set your mind on how you're going to go about getting that house. If you need your 20% down, start saving your 20% down. You might not get exactly the house you want, but at least you'll get closer to the intention. I hope I'm making sense here. This is part of the law of manifestation. And I believe with all this Pisces going on and it's all sextile, all that Capricorn and that Capricorn is trying that crazy Uranus and Taurus. I think all kind of manifestations are going down. Do you hear me? All kind of manifestations are going down. All kind. Okay, we're talking money, love, houses, you know, prosperity and popularity and all of those things. These are these are the things that are happening. And I do think these are things are happening to like water signs and earth signs in particular. Not seeing that fire signs and air signs won't get their little something something, but not the same as the water signs and air, uh, earth signs. We're talking uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. You guys are all going to be affected. Virgos are going to have the opposition. So uh, Virgos, I would protect your health right now with the coronavirus and all that going around. Uh, make sure you wash your hands two, three times when you're going out. Wear a mask if necessary. Um, you know, it's, it's your weakest time of the year, Virgo. So... What I don't want to see is like what I was telling my daughter. I don't want to see Virgos out there thinking, I am invincible. I'm going to do all the big things this month because I have a lot of stuff to do this month. Well, that's not a good idea. It's your lowest point of the year. Uh, now my daughter might be okay in her own little way at the end, tail end of things because she's got her Jupiter like in Pisces, but like about 18, 19, 20 degrees of it. But even so, you've got to get to that, right? So all of that getting there, ooh. Yeah, Virgos, just be careful of that. I just really want you guys to be careful. And Sages and Geminis, too. Uh, some Sages and Geminis might really be affected by all of these Pisces planets because we're talking about squares, and they are not comfortable. They're stressed. It could be sexual-inducing. But they're stressed, okay? Just know that. Okay, so uh, Venus is at 17 degrees of Aries. 17 degrees of Aries. And actually, Jupiter is now at 18 degrees of Capricorn. So it's square, but not exactly exactly what it is. Actually, it's like less than 30 minutes apart. They're square. Venus is square Jupiter. Venus, how dare you square Jupiter? Now, here's what I'm thinking. Like I said, the Venus in Aries makes you feel like, you know, you're going to take that conquest. You're going to, like, I'm king of the world. I'm jumping off this damn ship. I'm, I'm, you know, but look, 
once it's not in this, like it's in the square formation, so it's wanting you to take action, but they're not always going to be square. And then you're going to be like, wait a minute, why did I do X, Y, Z? Did I really want to do X, Y, Z? Yeah, that kind of thing. Now, the thing is, Neptune is sextile Jupiter in Capricorn. So there are, you know, there is some possibility of some magical, beautiful things occurring. Neptune is fantasy. Neptune is illusion. Neptune can be delusion and deception, but it can also be magical, illusionary. Like it's, I always think about Cinderella. That was Neptune, man. She had a magic fairy godmother. Neptune with a magic wand, Neptune turn mice into horsemen and a pumpkin into a coach. If that ain't Neptune, anyway, I'm just saying all that magic stuff, you know, believing in fairy tales, all of that can happen with Neptune sextile Jupiter. It just can. So be aware of that. Saturn's at 27 degrees of Capricorn. And Pluto is at 24 degrees of Capricorn. So they're, you know, they're really starting to pull away now. They're st I'm still giving them a conjunction because, I mean, for especially if you got it in the first house or something. But you can feel that they're pulling away. Heck, Jupiter's already up to 18 degrees already, catching up to Pluto. That's incredible. This Jupiter is speeding through Capricorn, it seems to me, like at record pace. Maybe it's because I am a Capricorn and I'm upset that it's already at 18 degrees and it's already inside of my ascendant. And I'm like, wait, I'm not ready for it. I want to have you in my first, I want to have you, you know, give me luck more than a half of a year. Now, luckily for me, and it's a shame I'm all talking about myself. <laughs> Well, luckily for me, I got Jupiter in the first house already. And when it goes into Aquarius, it's going to stay in my first house. Now, the only thing is Jupiter in the first house makes you fat. And I do not want to get anywhere near my weight back. I'm just saying. Now, it could mean that your health is good. So if you're someone who has Jupiter in your first house, how is it affecting you? Like if you've got, you know, Capricorn rising and Jupiter is now in your first house. Have you felt a difference in your, in you? Now, I, I'm just saying, I'm not bragging because sometimes when knee goes out and my back might hurt and, you know, at this age, you never know the ankle might twist or something, you know, but every morning that I can, I get out of my bed and I start jamming. I usually get out of bed because <clears throat> some song that I want to dance to, like J. Cole or Drake or something. <laughs> Cardi B. I don't know who I think I am, but I think I'm younger than I am. And I definitely think I'm cute. And so I get up and I imagine I'm on stage with like J-Lo and stuff. I do that. Yes, indeed. So this is also part of that Jupiter and Neptune. But I think that Jupiter in Capricorn, if it's anywhere near your first house or your fifth house or sixth house, you might really be feeling that extra vitality that comes with Jupiter because it does bring that extra vitality. I feel it. I do. Not to mention I'm losing weight. And I think that's because Saturn, Saturn, you know, has been there longer. Also, I wonder how many Capricorns with Saturn in the first house or any, any sign actually, but you have Capricorn rising. How many Capricorn risings have lost weight? I'd, I'd be interesting to know. Um, lost weight and now maybe even, you know, watching their weight because Jupiter's there. It's like, what? Okay, so we talked about Neptune. We talked about Uranus. I said Pluto's at 24 degrees, right? I did tell you that. And then uh, True Note is at six degrees of Cancer and Chiron is at three degrees of Aries. The thing about that Aries is it's still square that Mars. I don't like it. It's just, you know, the Chiron square Mars. Because it's like, I almost feel like Mars, you know, which is aggressive. It's like, almost feels like it might be picking at a wound. And that wound was freaking healed. Nobody told you to go back and pick at that wound. Don't go back and pick at that wound. Now, I can tell you how. <laughs> I can tell you how that affected my life, really. I'm not kidding. And it just could be that there is an old wound that has to be reopened. You have to cut it off. Cut out the infection, right? So, um, I'm, over the last month, you know, in the month of February, I managed to get a hold of my 
soon to be ex-husband and I had made this divorce video and I posted it so that when his friends could make sure he got to see it and he got to see it and he's agreed to give me my divorce. So after almost two years, I was able to go back, you know, cause you know, this Mars is in Capricorn. I hope Capricorns are taking advantage of this, but it gave me the courage to go back and ask for my divorce to demand. And I made a video demanding my divorce. Like, how dare you string me along for this long? Let me go. Cause I don't want to be with you anymore. And you obviously don't want to be with me. So this may be the type of wound I'm talking about. Something that you might've felt like you healed it and it was closed, dead, done. But that Mars is coming along and going, no, no. We're going to open up that wound and we're going to take that bullet out. Because that bullet's still in there. Uh, or that piece of glass is still in the, in the wound. Or that splinter is in there. we got to pull the splinter out. There's something of that nature going on. And it isn't going to feel that great. But it's healing the wound. And so, you know, I would be feel good about that. I, I think that the sun at three degrees of Pisces, sextile Mars, is supporting it. So let it go down, okay? Anyway, you guys, this has been Where the Planets Are in the Night Sky. And this has been Adrian, <laughs> Capricorn Tigers of Astrology, I look inside. And yes, I'm in a giddy mood and it's not gonna change. I have Jupiter sitting on my ascendant. Like exactly within 20 days minutes of it okay it's sitting right inside my ascendant so if i seem larger than life blonder than life and you know maybe even a little bit more obnoxious than life then that's because it's this it is night now here's the thing you guys i've already told myself if i don't get a lot of requests tonight that i'm going to do something altogether different and i mean it i ain't telling you what i'm going to do until i do it but first let me pull up where the the charts are and then i'm going to go as i usually do just to see if there's any particular people who want to get a reading. If not, I'm going to be doing readings for the signs, but I'm going to be doing them differently than you expect. So hold on for a second, because I like to do things differently. I don't know why I like to do things differently, but I do. I just I want to do, I want to do my own independent thing. That's what I want to do. I'm independently wealthy. Okay, so let's see. If I got this going, I don't even know if this is actually live. Like, did it go live? Am I on? Like, am I still live? Is it still going? Yes, there are. Oh, wow. I've got people out there. Wow. Someone told me I look amazing. Priscilla Muller, I love you, girlfriend. I can't believe you're out there. So cute. She's a cutie pie. And uh, let's see who else I got out there. Nefer Nishishi, I met. Hello, my sweet friend. I see Chiquita Robinson out there. You girls, I love you girls. My goodness. So glad to have my peeps out there. And you know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to do all of you a solid, okay? For the three people who actually did say something to me. Wait a minute. Let me, let me take, check out the group before I, I just limit it there. Because they'll be like, ah, say something to the group. And you didn't give me nothing. So hold on. <laughs> let me just check because I don't want to get nobody getting in trouble. Hold on. Let's see here. Now, if there's not, then I'm going to stick to my gun. We're going to do it just the way I was thinking about doing it because I got a, I had a dream. I had a dream. I had a dream. Okay, so good. There, this means I, I actually am free to do a couple of things because I don't see a whole bunch of extra stuff here. I do see that I know a week ago, that this young lady, and let me just make sure to let them wear, I think I actually did her, because she just gave me her date of birth, but she didn't give me the place. But I think I actually had it, and I think I did to let, I know I did her card. I might have looked at her chart as well. I'm pretty sure I did. Let me just make sure. Yep, I got her in here. So I'm pretty sure I did Teletha. So we don't have to worry about that. But you know whose chart I have not looked at in a month of Sundays? And I'm going to look at it now because, well, see, I'm nosy. And because I'm nosy, I got to see. <laughs> you got to look and be nosy about it. And then after I do these two, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, do what I'm going to do. So this person most likely is not expecting this. Oh, 
ooh, ooh. hold on. The, the microphone went to my chest. Uh, let's see here. And I'm going to put in part of Fortune Vertex Lilith Chiron Series Palace Juno Vesta. Yes. Okay. And we're going to pull up this chart. And the person that I am pulling up that chart for is my girl from Priscilla Moller. I saw you out there, Priscilla. I saw you out there, girl. That means I got to go and mess with your chart. <laughs> I mean, I got to go get in your business and look at your chart. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys, I, I always say this, but it is so true. I do this because I'm nosy. I told you guys, I'm nosy. I just want to know stuff. So let's look at what's going on in Priscilla's life. First of all, I want to tell, tell you, this child, whatever she is doing, she is working her career. Girl, you work that career. Do you hear me? Work it. Work it. You better work. Now turn to the left, now work it, girl. Now turn to the right, now do your thing. Now I happen to know she had graduated being a nurse and it was doing, pursuing, you know, pursuing something higher in her nursing. I remember that. And she's got Pallas Athena, the goddess of strategy, almost exactly on her midheaven. Where are we talking about here? At 10 degrees right inside of it her midheaven is at 813 her palace is at 10 it's right inside of her midheaven she is like the queen of strategy now the only thing that might get her is that iris is at 11 degrees almost 12 degrees here right there near her her midheaven so here's what happens with iris okay and she's got palace there it just means that you can strategize around it okay this is why i think i was meant to come here and tell you this so iris when i think of her story I always think of Maleficent from the movie Maleficent, you know, with uh, Angelina Jolie. And it's one of those situations where uh, Iris was not respected or loved or welcomed at the table with the rest of the gods and goddesses. And so, you know, you know, even now she's just a minor asteroid, right? And so she got a little attitude like Maleficent. She's not, you know, I'm going to take them all down. And so... You might have that attitude with Pallas sitting on her. You might just want to take them all down. I, mean, I don't, but not get in my way. I'm on my way to the top. You ain't stopping me. You got your son there, progressed. You know, the fact that you got a progressed son in Aries tells me nobody better mess with you. And this Aries is sitting right there, not Eris, but Aries. You got Eris in Aries, right? And the sun in Aries and Mercury in Aries, right? Or is no, no, Mercury actually went into Taurus. Oh, and you got Taurus up in the 10th. That's money. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this Mercury is right on the Uranus. So, okay, this tells me that you could be learning something new, something that's, you probably are either back in school or you're learning how to really do something that's going to take off your career. This to me, when, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but Mercury is the, the higher octave or lower octave, I forget which it is, of, of, of uh, Uranus. They, they vibe together. A lot of people don't know that. So Uranus and Mercury are almost like that, just like Venus and Neptune. And so the fact that they're conjoined in your chart is telling me I'm seeing a, a, a little piece of genius. Um, the